Hi, Mark here for the Kensington Minute. From working in the Peace Corps to working for the CIA to working for the KGB, this man from Alamogordo, New Mexico, went on a wild ride in the early 1980s. He was trained by the CIA and scheduled to deploy to Moscow, but before he could deploy there, he was fired. And this resentment drove him to betray American secrets to the Soviet Union. He partnered with his wife to escape, and then he turned up in Moscow, and he gave up precious secrets. He died in Moscow in 2002. According to Russian accounts, he fell off a ladder and broke his neck. Yeah, maybe. Well, he's dead. Do you know who he was? He was Edward Howard, who joined the CIA in 1980. His wife came aboard soon after, and they trained to be a husband and wife team of case officers. Things were going very well. Edward had performed very well in his training, absolutely top-notch, and there's no reason to believe that he would not flourish in Moscow. So just before he was to deploy with his wife, he took a routine polygraph examination. Well, he failed it. He had not been candid about his earlier drug use. He also stole some pocket change from a lady on an airplane. That was it. He was fired, but it was not it for Howard, who began to seethe. With his wife, he moved to New Mexico and worked in state government, but he just couldn't shake this consuming anger that he had for the agency. So he started to drink, and he was a bad drunk. Picked fights with people, he carried a, a sidearm. When he was intoxicated, he started calling and harassing people he knew at the agency. And this got him into more trouble. Then he started providing information to the Soviets. It may have started in a trip he took to Austria in 1984. He almost certainly betrayed Adolf Tokachev, who was then shot by the KGB, a very decent man and a strong asset for the agency. Well, the FBI knew something was up and started watching him in 1985. Howard, who had been trained in counter-surveillance, caught on to them and decided to give them the slip. With Mary, his wife, he evaded detection. It was a slick operation. As he and his wife rounded a bend in a car, he opened the passenger door and rolled out. At the same time, a cutout silhouette sprang up in his place. He and Mary learned the trick at the agency. The silhouette was called the Jack in the Box, and they pulled it off. He surfaced in Moscow, where he now lived, and he lived in an apartment that was Tony, Tony by Russian standards, in Moscow. His drinking, which was off the rails in the United States, got worse. He died at age 50. It was a household accident, falling off a ladder or down a staircase or something else that broke his neck. I have no idea. His poor wife, who helped him escape, was never charged. I don't know why. There's a reason for it. There's a reason for it. After his great skedaddle, she took her three-year-old son and they moved to her childhood neighborhood in Minnesota. That was nearly 40 years ago. She made no attempt to follow him in Moscow. David Weiss authored a book about him called The Spy That Got Away. So, how damaging was he? What I gave the KGB, really? A major propaganda victory. Yeah, of course, I had conversations with them. They were very interested in knowing about uh, the CIA in terms of personnel policies, how people join the CIA, how people uh, work in the CIA, et cetera, et cetera. Stuff of a general nature. But in terms of the na uh, giving national defense information to a foreign power, nothing. He was very damaging. He fingered Tokachev, which got him shot. 
he inadvertently served as a diversion for Aldrich Ames. Initially, counterintelligence personnel at the CIA did not realize that Ames had betrayed so many assets. For a short while, they thought the culprit was Howard. Like other Western defectors, Philby, McLean, Burgess, and a few others, he was lonely and drunk most of the time. This is a reoccurring pattern. There's another reoccurring pattern that we have seen in the Kensington Minute, and that is this. The devastation that this has on the family of the betrayer, the traitor, the spy, when they're revealed. It wipes entire families out emotionally, drains them financially, and leaves them with many questions about their relationship and maybe their relationship with others. How could he have done this to us? What did we do to deserve this? And how could I not have missed the signs? Well, we at Kensington really don't have any answers for that. This Kensington Minute does not represent the official position of the United States government. Now, take the Kensington Challenge up at the top of the homepage. There may be a question or two on Howard. See if you can pass. Out here. <laughs>